thanks for coming back. The um, purpose of this video is to show you how to make the coffee box that I made for my um, coffee and friends like gift set. So the box looks like an album to start and then when you open it there's a pocket that has a 1 4 inch gusset. I just placed a card in there that I made. On the right hand side is a box. Oops. Um, the box, the lid just comes off and it does hold nine K-cups. There are dividers in here. Those are optional. You don't have to put the dividers. You could leave just the base of the box and that would be fine too. There's no seam binding or anything for a closure because it fits just perfectly and the box keeps it up and it's closed. So no problem with uh, the closure. So I will show you, talk to you about the construction of the box. Let's start with the cover and we'll do that first and then we'll go through and give you the measurements for the paper for the inside. So the chipboard pieces, you're going to need two that are six and three fourths by six and three fourths. And then the spine is two inches. So that one will be two by six and three fourths. Once you have your chipboard cut, go ahead and put your score tape on the back. I just used some old stuff that I had and, pa and pieced it. So um, it's not the normal score sheets that I use which are way better than what I used on this. Um, the paper then, we're going to wrap these pieces individually. You're going to need two that are eight and three fourths by eight and three fourths, and that is to cover the front and the back. You're going to need a sheet that is five by eight and three fourths, and that's to cover the spine piece. And then the five and a half by six and five eighths piece is to cover the spine on the inside. Okay, so those are the papers we're going to work with first. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with making the cover, so if you are, you can go ahead and just make that and fast forward until we get to the inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, my spacers that you can get at the store. They are acrylic and they there are you get two one inch spacers and you get one that is one and a half and those just help you place your chipboard in the right spot and it's, they come in handy believe me so I'm going to take the backing off of my chipboard and this could take me a second because like I said this is old stuff that I have and it could be interesting on how to get this off uh, yeah this is going to be a let me try something else all right, I got the backing off. Now what you do is you bump up your chipboard up against each one of these one inch borders. So we want one inch on each side and one inch top and bottom. So I'm just gonna place that in there. Now I'll just wrap one of the covers with you because you do the front and back cover the same. And then go ahead and burnish that so that the adhesive is on there real well. Okay, and then go ahead and do your put your uh, other cover down on its white paper. And then the spine piece, place the five inches across the top. Now you want a five inch border at the uh, one inch border at the top again, but now you want a one and a half inch border on the sides. And that's so that when you attach it to your book, um, it's going to have that little extra wing space on each uh, side of the spine. So once you have the backing off, now you're going to bump this piece up against that one inch at the top and the one and a half inch at the side. See, And put those down. Burnish that on real well. Okay, so now I can bring this back. So remember, you should have two of these and one of these. So this is the front and back cover. And then to wrap these, I do, I still use score tape. So I'm going to place score tape around the perimeter of my chipboard piece on all four sides. Okay. Now what I do is I bring the uh, chipboard up and then over so that you get that crease on your paper. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and crease it a little bit more with my bone folder. Do that to all four sides. Okay. To me, the cover is one of the most important things, being it's what you see first when you see the project, and you want it to be nice and smooth. So it's worth it to put a little extra time and effort into it. Now, I do my corners by mitering at an angle, and when you do that, you don't go right to the corner. You leave a little bit of paper, so you leave about an eighth of an inch from the corner. If you cut out the square corners, if you like doing your corners that way, you would cut out the whole square. You would cut out this square where the two lines intersected, and then you can go to the point. So I have this tool that helps me know exactly where to cut so that I don't take away too much paper. So then I just slice that off. And let me show you how much is left then. See, it's about an eighth of an inch of paper. So you're going to miter all four corners. Like so. And then at this point I'm, I do put um, score tape around the perimeter of my paper then also. Um, some people just use glue at this point. I still like to use score tape. And I put it on after I miter the corner so that I don't waste any score tape and just end up cutting it off. Now I will be using art glitter glue in between the chipboard and that score tape piece that I'm putting on right now just to give it full coverage of adhesive. Okay, I am going to make sure and burnish that. So it's when I lift the backing, the tape doesn't come off. Now this is a perfect square, so it doesn't matter what side you start with. Usually I start with the long sides first. Not, it's not, you don't have to, but that's how I've always done it. So you're going to take off the backing of the score tape. So I'm going to take off three sides here. So I have to do the sides, otherwise this will get stuck on it when I fold it over. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take off this piece down here. So at this point, you want to use your adhesive. I'm using the art glitter glue, and you're going to place glue up against the chipboard. That's so that the paper sticks really nice and you have a smooth edge. And then I do place the art glitter glue in between this score tape and the chipboard. When I bring it up and over, I make sure I smooth it as I go so that I don't have ripples. Or, and then I make sure that I burnish it real well. And then I go ahead and make sure that I burnish that edge so that it's nice and flat. Okay. I do the opposite side next. So across from the side we just did. Place your glue on the chipboard right up against it. And in between here. Bring it up and over. Smooth it out as you're bringing it over. Burnish it flat. Lift it up and go over the edge. Now, because I miter the corners the way I do, um, I have to do an extra step. If you are, if you cut out the squares, you don't have to do this next step. So I have to, because I have that little excess paper there, I need to tuck this in so that it goes around the corner. So I just kind of flatten it out with my bone folder. I just kind of push it in around that corner and flatten it. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I just kind of flatten it down. I don't know if you can see that. So then I can go ahead and put the glue down up against the chipboard and in between. 
And then when I lift it up and over, I put my nails down there so that those corners stay down and don't come up. And then I can flatten it down. And that just kind of gives your corners a little bit sharper look. And then go ahead and do it on the edge. I like the look of the angle. That's why I do it that way. Okay, again, I'm going to push those little excess pieces down and around that corner. That one doesn't want to, there we go. Okay. Go ahead and make sure that those little pieces stay down when you bring it over. And burnish it. So it's just so now when I work with white I do get little spots so it's a good thing we cover it but it's nice and smooth everything lines up and is flat so we'll do the other cover the same way and then we do the spine a little bit differently so once you're ready for the spine piece I place a little piece of score tape on the short ends here I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did for the front and back cover and I'm going to bring that up and over I'm going to press it down Notice I did not miter these corners. I left the, all the papers intact still. Okay. So this is what we attach to the front and back cover. So we need these wings to stay open. So these do not come over. Now I am going to uh, do these backwards also so that the book bends easily, opens and closes. And then I'll just kind of run my bone folder lightly up against the edge there. If you're not using the Artisan, which I highly recommend from the store because uh, it's very strong, it does not crack, it has a nice texture because of the linen in it. You can be a little bit more aggressive on your paper. If you're using a different brand, that may not be the case. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm... Now, Tammy used to do it this way. She's the one who came up with this um, design for the cover. She now, I believe, cuts this square out to get rid of bulk. I still like to keep it because sometimes I have a problem with that corner showing of the chipboard, and I don't like that. So... I use the original way of cutting that square at a diagonal. Well, in this case, it's a rectangle. So I cut off on this rectangle from one corner to its opposite corner. So that forms a hexagon. And I'm going to do that on the other side, too. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing on this side. I'm still going to place glue up against the chipboard, but then I'm going to fill in the rest of this hexagon with glue, even those little triangles at the end. I'll bring it closer so you can just kind of see how I do that. So I have glue on the whole section, even these little pieces right there. So then I'm going to bring it up and over, and this is important to really flatten that out. And I still want to run my bone folder up against the edge. Okay, and I'll do that same thing on the opposite end. I feel like I'm on a camera site. Take off the backing. Glue up against the chipboard. Fill in the rest of this hexagon. Uh, it's not hexagon. Trapezoid. <laughs> With glue. Bring that up and over. And then give it a good burnish to make sure everything's laying down nice and flat. And do your edge. 
So it's at this point that we do some mitering. So we got to get rid of some of this bulk and we don't want this paper to show like come up over the covers. So then what you do is you rest your scissors up against the chipboard and you cut off at an angle. Okay. Now this one you have to flip upside down, rest your scissors up against the chipboard, cut a slight triangle off. All four corners. So at this point I still want to make sure that I have everything burnished real nice, crisp edges. And what we do then is we attach the cover by placing, looking at the raw side, we're going to place the spine on top here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place glue, uh, score tape and I use glue also. So my first, I'm using one fourth inch. When I do my first line, I don't go exactly to that chipboard piece. I give myself a little bit of space, not a lot. And then I just do one in the middle of that wing. And I do one at the very end. Okay. And then I'll fill in the middle section with art glitter glue. Do the same thing on the other wing. So score tape pretty close to the chipboard, but not all the way. One in the middle or close to it and one on the edge. And as always, you burnish. So this is what it looks like so far. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that this lines up and I bump up the cover piece right up to that chipboard. Okay, you don't have to leave a gap. So I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to fill in some glue in between my tape strips. Okay. Line it up top and bottom right up against the chipboard, but don't go over. Press down and I turn it over and I burnish it real well on this side. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to attach the second cover piece right up against the chipboard like so. So I'll remove my backing. Fill in with some glue. Alrighty. And I just want to make sure that everything lines up right up against the chipboard, but don't go over. Press down, turn it over, and burnish that on real well. Okay, so now we want to cover that spine piece in the middle. So that's what the, uh, what size was that? Uh, five and a half by six and five eighths inch piece that you have left. I'm trying to clean off my area. There we go. So what we do is we place this piece to cover our spine. Now notice I covered it or cut it a little bit longer so that it gets rid of that edge, that ridge, and it will lay down nice and flat. So we want to, um, this is one eighth of an inch shorter than the height of our book. That's why it's six and five eighths. So I'm going to center it top, bottom, side, side. Okay. Now you don't want to use, I don't think you want to use glue on this part because you can get uh, ripples and sometimes it just doesn't lay as smooth. So again, score sheets on the back or score tape. Again, I'm using old tape. So 
Mine looks a little bit different. Okay, I have the backing off. I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. Again, you'll have about a sixteenth of an inch top and bottom. And burnish that. So we do want to bend our book carefully so that it knows where the front and back covers are. So I bring up the book slowly and I use my bone folder and tuck in the paper into that crease. Be careful if you're not using the artisan. This is strong paper. And the other side, bring the cover up, start tucking in that paper into the crease. And there you have your cover. Okay. Nice. So on the inside, we're going to uh, cover this with pattern paper. This side I did not because we're going to put a box on top. So if you take a look at mine, let me show you. I'm going to cover my spine piece. And I'm pretty sure I uh, used a 2 by 6 and 5 8 Let me check. Nope, oh, one and seven eighths. So one and seven eighths by six and uh, five eighths for this spine piece to be covered. And because our book is six and three fourths by six and three fourths, we're going to do six and five eighths by six and five eighths for our base paper. Now I do um, use, I do ink my edges. So I go around with ink so that it's got a nice finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and cover my spine and my front page with my pattern paper. Then we'll come back and do our pocket. Okay, um, you might want to decide what paper you want for your pocket also. So I got to go through my paper and decide what I want too. So I use the teacup or the coffee cup on the uh, inside left. On the back of it is that kind of uh, kind of my uh, dotted line whatever paper. <laughs> That's what I did there. Now this would also be a good time to go ahead and do the front and back cover because once you get the uh, boxes in here, I like to cover my book when I can lay it flat. And so that's what I did. So I have some extra matting here. So the um, green that I have in the background is six and five eighths by six and five eighths. Then I went a half of an inch shorter. So the uh, pattern paper is six and one eighth by six and one eighth. And then I just found a cut apart, matted it on black and then matted it on that peach color. On the side, the green is almost two. I think I went, well, it's probably one and seven eighths. And then I went a half of an inch shorter. So if I went one and seven eighths, uh, that's one and three eighths um, for this piece. And the height, I went a half inch shorter too. So that's six and one eighth. And on the back, I just, um, I put some, I had some of the green left. And then I just found some that I had already used that I just had a little bit. So I just kind of made it look like this was the binding of the book around here. And then I put that on the back. Okay. So it is easier to cover before we get into the pockets in the box. So let's get, after you do the decorating, I'm, I might go back and add flowers and stuff to the front. But for right now, just getting the paper down is going to be a good idea. So for the inside, you're going to need to cut some cardstock. So here we go. Oh, I got a phone call. Okay, you might want to get a pencil and paper and write this down, or you can just pause the video, but these are the measurements for the paper that you're going to need. So the pocket that's on the left-hand side is going to be three and one-fourth by seven and a half. And I'll tell you the scoring after we get all the paper cut. Um, the divider piece for the box on the right-hand side that holds the K-cups that's 11 and 1 fourth by 6 and 1 fourth. You'll also need for the dividers two pieces that are 2 and a half by 6 and a fourth. The base of the box is 11 and 1 fourth by 11 and 1 fourth. And the lid to the box is 9 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7 eighths. Okay. 
So after you have that cut, we're going to move on to the scoring. We'll score everything at once while we have our scoreboard out. So let's start with the base of our box. That's the 11 and 1 fourth by 11 and 1 fourth. And I've already scored mine, so I'll just go over this kind of quickly. So when you have your paper with the 11, obviously the 11 and 4th is at the top because it's a square. Um, you're going to score at 1 and 1 fourth, 2 and a half, go down to 8 and 3 fourths, and 10. You're going to do those same score marks when you turn your paper one time. So I'll say them one more time. 1 and 1 fourth. Two and one half, eight and three fourths, and ten. That's the base of your box, your K cut box. Okay. The lid is nine and seven eighths by nine and seven eighths, and the lid is a little bit deeper. Because the K cups stand up higher than the bottom of the box, the K cups kind of keep the box up to where it needs to be, the lid anyway. So 9 and 7 eighths, um, we're going to score at 1 and 3 fourths on all four sides. So score at 1 and 3 fourths, rotate your paper, 1 and 3 fourths, rotate, 1 and 3 fourths, and the last side, 1 and 3 fourths. Okay, that's on all four sides. Next, this divider piece. Now the math on this was kind of weird. So this may not be exactly per, exactly the same, but it's going to be pretty darn close. So the way we do this is this is going to be, it's going to cover the bottom of our box. Okay. So um, we need gussets in between. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I we are going to do these going this direction and then we do two separate pieces for the ones going the opposite direction. Okay. Let me get that closed real quick. Okay, so here we go. Um, the 11 and 1 fourth is across the top. Score at 2 and 1 eighth. 3 and 3 eighths, 4 and 5 eighths, um, 6 and 3 fourths, 8, 9 and 1 fourth, 2 and 1 eighth, 3 and 3 eighths, 4 and 5 eighths, 6 and 3 fourths, eight, nine and one fourth. Okay, that's all the scoring on that piece. The two other pieces of the dividers, um, you're going to place the short side across the top. So this is two and a half and you're going to score at one and one fourth, right in half on both of them. Two and a half across the top, score at one and a fourth. And the last piece is your three and a fourth by seven and a half. Start with your seven and a half inches across the top of your scoreboard. You're going to make two score marks because this has a one fourth inch uh, one fourth inch gusset. So score at one half and three fourths. Rotate it so that the short side's at the top. Score at one half and three fourths, and rotate it one more time, one half and three fourths. Okay, that's all your scoring. So let's do some burnishing and working on each of those pieces separately then. Let's start easy. So this is the lid. This was the 9 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7, uh, yeah, 9 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7 eighths. So we are going to burnish our score marks on all four sides. One more here. All right, so when we cut, we obviously want this square to be a perfect square in the center. So when we do any kind of mitering, we want to make sure that we don't mess with the sides and we want to make sure everything is nice and straight, okay? 
So when I cut out this square, or cut this square, I'm going to go on the inside of that square mark because I have a little bump. So I'm going to go right on the uh, side of it and I go straight up to that score. Then I'm going to slightly miter so it becomes a tab. And I slightly miter this one too. So it looks like so. Okay, let's do the other side. Cut straight up to the score. So now we want to take a small section off. And we also want to miter that on the outside too. A small triangle comes off. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite end. Okay, one more. Okay, now for the lid, I did not put any pattern paper on the inside sides. So let me... So I put... We can uh, put paper on to get ready on the top and on the inside, that big square. We're going to put paper on that. We're going to end up gluing these and the tabs go to the inside. So we can go ahead and put our pattern paper on these rectangular parts too. I did not put any on the inside because I didn't want the box lid to be so tight. The more paper you add, the tighter it's going to be. So um, if this uh, measures, I don't remember the inside square, is six and a fourth by six and a fourth. So we're going to cut our paper at six and one eighth by six and one eighth for the top and the inside. The rectangular pieces, we're going to cut at six and one eighth by one and five eighths. Okay, so decide what papers you want. Don't do the inside sections, just the middle. Okay, so pick out your pattern paper and you'll um, put that on before we glue it together. All right, remember, don't cover the inside except for the center. There's my outside. So we're going to put glue on the tabs and then we attach them behind like so. So glue on the tab. Make sure that it comes up and meets that corner nice and square. And then I like to turn it and burnish it real well. Make sure it sticks and we have that nice corner. When I say the nice corner, I want the two edges to meet nice and neat. Okay, the next one. Glue on the tab. Bring it over this side up. Check your corners. Then I like to stand it up. Burnish it real well. Okay, let's do the other two corners the same way. Good. Now it does not bother me that I see those tabs on the inside because when you take a box lid off, I don't sit there and stare at the inside. But if it bothers you, you might want to double check to make sure that it fits. If you put paper on the inside, you have to make sure that it fits on top of the base of your box. I've done that plenty of times where I've put pattern paper on and then I realized, oh, now it's too thick and it doesn't work.
Okay, last one. And we'll decorate, you can decorate the lid at the end. Okay, so we'll just move that off to the side. That's the lid. Okay, so let's do the base of our box. That's your 11 and a fourth by 11 and a fourth. Now the cutting on this one is a little bit different. So what's going to happen is we're going to cut off an L. When I, well, let's um, ignore that. The three squares, there's four squares in the corner. We're going to cut off three of them. So let me get a pen and show you. On all the corners, you take out the three corners, uh, the three edge cor uh, squares, okay? On all four corners, take out the three that are on the edge. Now, this is made so that it has thicker edges, more durable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the three squares first straight on the lines no mitering right now okay so that's what it looks like when you take those three out so let's do that on all four corners first to be as straight as I can and I'll tell you we'll go through that in just a second as to why and which ones we're going to end up mitering. corner to do. So now we're going to make tabs. Those little squares that are left become our tabs to attach our sides. So I want you to go straight up on the line and stop at that score mark so that this is now loose. The square is loose. We do want to miter this so because it's going to become a tab. So we take out a slight angle, so like a little triangle, and a slight angle like so. Okay, let's do this one straight up. So we're going to have a tab opposite the one we just did. Straight up on that line to get to the score. So that's now loose. Slightly angle and miter. So you take out a little triangle. Take out a little triangle. Those are your two tabs on that side. Let's do the same thing directly across from those. Same thing. One more. Okay, now that step's done. So now what I want to do is I want to slightly miter this outside rectangle because what we're going to do is we're going to fold these over to make the sides stronger. Okay. So we don't want these to get in the way. Let's go ahead and burnish. Go ahead and burnish all your score marks first. That'll be easier so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. 
Now you don't, I mean, we cut it so that it would have stronger sides because it's going to be holding up the cover a little bit on our um, book box. I wanted the sides to be a little bit more durable and strong. Forgot to do the tabs. So this part we might have to do a little bit of adjusting. Okay. So what we end up doing is we put the tab to the inside and we're going to wrap that other piece around it. Okay. Now that means that we also have to check to make sure that it goes around and doesn't bump up or pucker when we put that outside edge down. Okay. Now this is one that you also want to do some pattern paper first also, but I'm going to go around and just make sure that when I glue the tab to the first rectangle on the side and then bring this paper over that, will it lay down nice and neat? Oopsie. Or will I need to trim the bottom? And so far I'm going to be okay. Now when I say trim the bottom, I'm talking about this outside. You might have to take a sh just a sliver off if yours is not lining up nice and neat. Now, the bottom of the box gets glued to the album cover, so you don't need to put any paper here. Um, we can go and put paper on all of the rectangular pieces that are attached to the square in the center. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Not this first one that we tucked down, but this one that's closest to the uh, base, you can put your pattern paper on there. So these are one and a fourth, so I'm going to go one and one eighth by six and one eighth. One and one eighth by six and one eighth on the four rectangular sides. Okay, so at this point you have to decide if you're going to do the dividers. So there's a couple options. If you do not want the dividers in there, you can go ahead and put your pattern paper on the bottom. If you want to do the dividers, you don't put this here. Of the paper down. If you want the dividers and you want to be able to take the dividers out and just use it, then go ahead and put pattern paper on. I am going to, I'm not going to pattern paper this, okay? I'm just going to leave it because I'm just going to use it for the K cups and give it as a gift, so I'm not going to take those out. If you want them to be able to take out the dividers and use it as a regular box, go ahead and put pattern paper here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start gluing this. I got glue stuck here. Okay, so I'm going to place glue on my tab. I got to poke this here. Okay, I'm going to place glue on the tab. I'm going to bring it up and over to meet this so that these two pattern pieces meet. And I want to make sure they're square. And just like we did before, I'm going to stand it up and I want to burnish it Ooh, without dropping it. Okay, so those meet nice and neat. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Bring it up and over so that your corners meet. And nice and neat like so. Lift it up and burnish that. Let's go ahead and do the other two tabs. I'm going to do these two at the same time. So I'm putting glue on the last two. Bring that up. Make sure it meets on both sides. And burnish. 
I'll make sure that it lines up. Yes. Okay. So now we are going to tuck these down. So I want you to see if they all go down nice and neat or if you have to do any trimming. Okay, I do. So here's what I'm going to, um, I'm going to slightly miter, just slightly. Each of, right here. And on the other end, just slightly. I'm going to actually do that to all four of them just so that they're consistent. If yours lays down nice and neat and you don't have to, then you can skip this part, but I need to slightly miter. This one. Now, I also did not put um, pattern paper on the sides in here. If you want to, you can. I did not. So now I'm just going to glue all of these down. So I'll just do one at a time. So I'm putting glue on the inside. It's going to go on the inside of the box and it will cover those tabs then and it makes your box sturdier okay you see inside there And I'm going to do that to all four, just to keep get those sturdy walls down. Two more. Now, if you put paper on the insides, that's fine because that's not going to affect the fit of the lid. So if you want it just to be more decorative, you totally can. And the last one. So this is the bottom. I'm not going to do any pattern paper on the inside. You can choose if you're going to. Let me get rid of these scraps. And now let's work on the dividers. There we go. Okay. Now, if you put your lid on right now, you're going to be like, oh, no, the bottom gets pushed up inside the lid. I know. That's because the K-cups kind of keep it up. So I don't put the lid on until after I glue it down and put the K-cups in. All right, dividers. So the piece that was 11 and a fourth by 6 and a fourth, we're going to have this is going to get glued to the base of the box. These two get glued together to make a divider. This is glued to the box. It's like a gusset, a very large gusset. And then these two pieces get glued together. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish my score marks. And this one actually, I'm going to go the opposite. 
So you'll have some mountains here in just a second. When I say mountains, when you glue the two together, it kind of reminds me of doing a hinge a little bit. So I'm going to end up gluing these two together. So that's going to make part of the hinge. This is going to be glued to the bottom of the box. Okay. Next one. Okay, so it's going to be like so. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and glue those. The two that are the same, the one and one fourth inch pieces get glued together. And I'll go ahead and burnish that so it stays nice. It attaches. Okay, and the next one I'll do the same thing. Squeeze them together. I'll go ahead and burnish it. And this is when we put the pattern paper on. We put the three separate pieces, okay? Now, the measurements are pretty close, but they're not exactly the same on these gusset pieces. So like the first one, I'm going to make one and seven eighths. This one, I'm going to do, one, I'll just do one and seven eighths on all of them. Yep, one and seven eighths on all of them. And they are going to be six and one eighth. So one and seven eighths by six and one eighths go in these large gussets. Okay, at this point you have another decision to make. So you, we're going to end up gluing this down like so in the box. It may be that you just want three rows and you don't want the other dividers going the other way. You can do that too. It's, it's totally up to you. I will show you how to do the six different sections if you want, um, but I'm wondering if maybe this time I do want just three rows. Eh, no, I'll do the other one. Okay, so let's get the other sections ready. So you have two pieces that are two and a half by six and a fourth, and we um, went in half and we scored. Now we're just going to burnish those, and for strength, we double them instead of just making them a single sheet. We're going to glue these together to make them a little bit stronger. Okay, and just squeeze those together, burnish them so that they stick nice and well. to divide this so that we have slits here and here so we can stick these pieces down like so. We want to be able to push them down. So I'm trying to think if this was six and a fourth and I divided that by three, what did I get? I think it... All right, so when you divide six and a fourth divided by three, you get two and a twelfth. Well, we go by sixteenths on this bad boy, or by eights. So you can go two and a little tiny bit <laughs> and and put a line. And then on this side, go in two and just a little tiny bit and put a line. Um, you can have, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to push this down and I'm going to place my ruler and I'm going to put a little pencil mark. Actually, I don't have a pencil. It went out. Um, 
I don't even have to use a pen. Ugh, I don't want to use a pen. I might be able to see it. Oh, well. Get my pen out of here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the two and just put a little line, a little bit past the two, like hardly at all. You see that? Just a little tiny. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go just a little bit past two. And put a little dot. Now, I'm going to fold this one on top of this one so that I can see where they line up those dots so that I can cut them exactly in the same spot. So I folded those into the center and I put a dot on the other side so I know exactly where to cut so that they line up. And then all you're going to do is take your scissors and cut from the top down to the base. As straight as you can. So it's like so. Now we're going to do the other side the same way. All the way down to that score mark. Okay, so now we have all this loosey-goosey stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place these in those slots. And push them down as far as they'll go. this next one. Push them down as far as they will go. Now you can try putting some glue if you want to. I'm going to leave mine loose. I'm not going to try glue because I don't want to make a mess. And once you have your K-cups in there, it's going to you're not even going to see them that much if they're not exactly straight. Okay? And then we're going to put glue down here and attach that to the base of our box. Like so. Okay? So now it's time to put glue all over the bottom and glue it to the base of the box. Okay. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I bought one of these little candles that lights up. And I glued the lid on where the battery goes. And then I took those carp, um, floor protectors and glued it on there. So that's what I'm going to use to make sure I can push this down so it adheres real well. Okay. Like so. All right, now this gets glued on to this. Now when you do it, I bring my book up and over. I don't want it all, the, you don't want to cross that score mark. And you don't want it all the way to the edge. Just kind of center it as best you can so that you have the same distance. To I'm going to turn it this way so I can easily see if I have the right amount of space at the top and the bottom. Okay, and I do. Now you can also decide if you want to cut out little half circles on the two sides of your box so that you can kind of put your hands in there to bring it up. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down to my book. I'm going to be generous with the glue. Make sure the corners and the edges here. And I want to make sure top and bottom. Okay. 
Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Get my little handy dandy tool again. Push it down. Make sure it's sticking to the book. set this to the side I am going to end up uh, I'm going to take a half up a circle punch and cut out two little moons on the edge here so we have one last thing to do before we finish decorating and that last piece is our pocket that goes on the left hand side and it has one fourth of an inch gusset so let's go ahead and burnish on the score marks first three sides and we're going to kind of do it the same way we did the base of the box we're going to be cutting out some squares on the ends so once again we're going to take off the three squares on the end we're going to leave one square intact and it's going to be really small So it's like that. Do the other side. Take out the three on the outside. Like so. Now we need to make those become tabs. So we're going to cut up on the line till we get to the score. And just like hardly, we're going to just miter just a little bit because this is a small piece. It is slightly mitered. Okay. So what we're going to do is now cover the front of our pocket with the pattern paper that we want. And I like using those little chalkboard pages. Let's see. I can find it. I like using this. So we are going to need a piece that is two and three eighths by five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths across. What did I say? Uh, two and three eighths tall. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put that tab I keep, and we're going to bring it up underneath that first score so that it forms a corner. And then this will be what we glue to the book because it's this half inch section. So bring that so that it matches up with that other one fourth inch gusset. Hold it for a second. And the other side, I'm going to glue that tab so that it goes to the side piece that's also a fourth of an inch. Hold 
that for a second. Okay. Let it dry for just a minute and then we'll glue it to our box. So this is a six inch pocket. This is six and three fourths. So we're going to have a little bit of a border. So I want a little bit of a border on each side and a little one on the bottom so that it kind of lines up with the box. Okay. So I'm going to tuck in the sides. and put that bottom up on top of them. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this corner and this corner so that it stays closed. I'm just putting the clothespins there just to kind of help keep it together until we glue it onto the book. Okay. So now we'll put glue on the three half inch sides and then we'll center it and put it right there on our book. Like so. Now, I'm not going to go over how to make the card. You can make any kind of card or anything you want to put inside this pocket. I also have this so that I can reach down and make sure that it stays glued down to my book. Okay, check your sides and the bottom, once they look about even like so, I'm going to turn it upside down and this is when I stick this tool in here and make sure that it's attached. look in there make sure it's laying down flat and I think it is all right and that people is it let me put when I say the thumb holes let me show you on this one that I've already done I need to go to my box and cut out this little half circle so that I can put my fingers in it and lift it up easier And then I'll finish decorating the inside. Now this one, you have a little bit of space between the top of the box and this pocket. So you can put a little bit of dimension. Like on this one, I have a kind of a flat flower that doesn't get in the way of the closure at all. Okay. All right. Thank you for uh, coming to my channel and learning how to make this. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but I think that would make a really cute gift for somebody. So again, that was the Coffee and Friends paper. And it's at Country Craft Creations. Uh, have a good day, everybody, and let me know if you have questions. Just put something in the comments below.